On the 7th of November 2020, the Spirit Specialist opened its doors, well, door, to the public for the very first time. Just a few days after the UK went into a second lockdown, I launched a new retail business offering some of the world's most exciting spirits to a general public who basically couldn't leave the house. From day one, I always said that if I could make it to a year operating with the door still open and some money still in the bank, even if it was just a fiver, I could consider that a success. And so here we are, just a couple of weeks away from the shop's first birthday. To celebrate this anniversary, I'd like to present you my nominations for the Spirit Specialist Spirits of the Year 2021, those particular bottles that have stood out for me personally. Every single product sold in the shop I sample before bringing it in to ensure it's of a high standard and good value to you, the customer. And given the time of year, maybe these nominations will give you some ideas for presents in the run-up to Christmas, or even just a little treat for yourself. On the weekend of our first birthday, I'll upload a new video in which I announce the winners. But for now, here's the nominations for... The Liqueur of the Year. Hello there. Ben Bowers, the Spirit Specialist, here to give you the nominations for my liqueur of the year. Now, liqueur is a pretty broad category, um, and you know, looking through the, the stock that I have available and what I've encountered over the year, this was quite a difficult one to actually put nominations in and just keep them down to four because you can do fruit liqueurs, you can do cream liqueurs, you can do coffee liqueurs, you can do all sorts of stuff. So I've tried to, looking at what I've got, do a liqueur from almost kind of like each little area that you might have in a liqueur section. Bit of a tricky one, um, and obviously you can't really compare a cream liqueur to a coffee liqueur, so actually picking a winner out of this is gonna prove a little bit tricky, but hopefully this will give you some ideas of things to look for, um, particularly in the time of this time of year, we're in the lead up to Christmas at the time of recording, and a lot of people do like liqueurs at Christmas, so fingers crossed, one of these four will absolutely tick the boxes that you're looking for. And the first nomination is Blackfire Coffee Liqueur. Now I'm a bit of a sucker for coffee liqueur. Uh, and when I first opened the shop, I had too many coffee liqueurs. I basically had a whole shelf just of coffee liqueurs. I went a little bit crazy. And this was one that um, I saw a picture of and I saw the blurb on it and I was like, this sounds interesting. This could be awful or it could be absolutely amazing because this is a coffee liqueur that is made with, it says here, tequila blanco and chili. So there is actual chili in this as well as it's a coffee liqueur with the tequila based rather than most of them tend to be like neutral grain spirits, that sort of thing. This is not to everybody's taste, admittedly. My wife loves a coffee liqueur. She absolutely loves an espresso martini. She is not a fan of this, but then she is not a fan of tequila. She likes spicy food, but she's not a fan of tequila at all. But if you like something a little bit different, something a little bit unusual, something with a little bit of heat, something with a bit of earthiness, something that takes a coffee liqueur and goes in a completely different direction, and is an absolute game changer for an espresso martini if you're liking this. Blackfire is absolutely the one for you. This, a good friend of mine, uh, who's a regular customer, lives in the village. He really likes espresso martinis. He's got an AeroPress, he's got like a coffee supply, all of this lot. And he was playing around with espresso martinis. Got a bottle of this, made an espresso martini with this and also the mermaid sea salt vodka and basically came into the shop with a thermos going, you've got to try this, you've got to try this. It's absolutely amazing, my world has changed. This really is absolutely fantastic. I do have some to try if you want to come in the shop and try it. Like I say, for some people, if you don't like tequila, you're probably not gonna get on with this. But if you do like things slightly different, if you like a range of flavors and you like things that go in a completely different direction, this is absolutely the one. And that is why it is one of my nominations because it has been a revelation. It's been so much fun and I love things that are doing things a little bit differently. So the second nomination is Le Verger French terroir liqueur. So beautiful bottle, so elegant, very, very, very French, very French indeed. So this is a Calvados based liqueur that also uses peaches and cherries in the mix. And that Calvados base is evident. So we're looking at 25% uh, as well. And it clear, it's clear that there's a Calvados base because this is predominantly like an apple flavored liqueur, but the peach and the cherry do come through and really lift it and really make things interesting and kind of dance in and out of each other. It's not just apple. It's a really versatile liqueur as well. Um, I have made cocktails with this with amaretto. Um, I've put it in coffee, works quite well, surprisingly. Um, it's also brilliant in champagne. 
and Prosecco if you must, but champagne, because it's French, obviously, you need to have champagne with it. Just a dash of this doesn't take a lot, but it completely lifts a glass of champagne, particularly if you've got a champagne or a Prosecco that's kind of okay, but you want to do something with it. Just a dash of this takes it in a whole different direction. It's absolutely fantastic stuff. Really versatile liqueur, beautiful on its own, chilled out the fridge, just as a, a, a nice kind of measure after dinner. Very, very popular with my customers as well. It, it seems to be that kind of flavor profile that if you like kind of brandy, if you like whiskey, if you like sweet things, if you like sour things, because it's not too overly sweet. So people that prefer something slightly drier, because you've got that apple element in there, it's, it's dry enough that people will go, oh, actually this is not too sweet, but it's sweet enough that people who like sweet liqueurs and want that fruitiness also go for it as well. It's an absolute stunner. Looks beautiful. It's a brilliant present for Christmas because you can do so much with it as well. You don't just have to just drink it or just put it in champagne. It's very, very versatile indeed. And that is why it is a much deserved nomination for this particular category. So that's the second. The third is Cardrona Distillery Rose Rabbit Orange Liqueur. Now I kind of fell in love with Cardrona, partly because their brand ambassador who lives up in Scotland, who sadly doesn't work for them anymore, is a thoroughly, thoroughly lovely bloke. If you're watching, you know you are. Um, but Cardrona, uh, New Zealand distillery, um, in the process of making single malt whiskey, their whiskey is fantastic, but also their vodka was fantastic. Their gin was good, just not as fantastic as everything else. And their liqueurs are mind blowing. Beautiful bottle, absolutely gorgeous, even to the point where, I'm not sure if you see it, but there's actually a slight lip on it, so it's really easy to pour out. But the crazy thing with these liqueurs is, and this is what absolutely blew my mind, and it will blow your mind when you drink it as well, is these are what I would essentially call cast strength liqueurs. Most liqueurs are, most liqueurs, some are 40%, but most are like 20, 25%, that sort of thing. With a Cardrona Distillery, they essentially make their spirit, they add a sugar solution, they do whatever flavorings they need to do. So in the case of this orange liqueur, it is fresh oranges that are macerated in the spirit, add a sugar solution. They then, once you put sugar solution in, it's really hard to actually um, measure what the alcohol percentage is. So they send it away to another place to be tested, who then come back and go, oh, you've got an orange liqueur here at 47.6% ABV. Are you sure that's what percentage you want it at? And they just go, yeah, all right, fine. That's that's not a problem at all. So they do an elderflower and a butterscotch. The butterscotch is fantastic. The elderflower, even for me, who's not a great fan of elderflower, I think is really, really nice. But this orange liqueur, this is something else. It's fresh. It's clean. You can tell that there has been actual proper oranges used in it. No concentrate, no flavorings. It's so fresh. It's amazing in a margarita. Anything you need triple sec, anything you need curacao, anything you need any kind of orange liqueur in, this, this beats everything else hands down. You just don't put as much in because it's pretty bloody strong. But just drinking it neat on its own, gorgeous. Oh, chilled, even out the freezer, absolutely superb. Out the freezer, drizzle this over some pudding, whatever pudding it is, particularly a warm one, whether it's apple crumble or chocolate fudge cake or something like that. Just drizzle a little bit of this over the top of it. <gasps> wow, absolutely incredible stuff. I have done margaritas with this and maybe gone a little bit too much on this and kind of regretted it. So I do not recommend putting too much on this, but the flavor profile is absolutely amazing. This is such, such good stuff and I highly, highly recommend it. So the final nomination for the liqueur category is Spirit of Yorkshire Cream Liqueur. So, um, I have one of my customers actually said, oh, it looks like a bottle of Pantene shampoo, which, yeah, actually kind of, I'll give you that. Um, this sort of isn't really supposed to exist either. Um, Spirit of Yorkshire Distillery, the Filey Bay range of whiskies, they only ever wanted to make whiskey. They've not done a gin, no intention of doing a gin, didn't really want to do a cream liqueur. And I can still remember the, the day that Joe, who's the master of the distiller, who I know very well, says, got a cream liqueur coming out. I was like, really? He said, yeah, I don't really want it to come out, but we kind of need to do one. Essentially because people were coming to visit the distillery, you would do the tour at the end of the tour, you get a shot of their whiskey or a couple of shots of whiskey to try, but not everybody drinks whiskey. So there were people basically stood there going, well, I don't really like whiskey and I've got nothing to try. So they made a cream liqueur as well. So that the people that don't drink whiskey, more people drink cream liqueurs, even people that don't drink whiskey, you know, Bailey's is the massive seller for a reason. So they've done their own cream liqueur. So this is a combination of their single malt whiskey and then it says single malt spirit because it's under three years old spirit in there as well. 
Weirdly, it's uh, made over an island, so they send their spirit over to Ireland to make the cream liqueur, and then they have to bring it back. Um, but what I love about this cream liqueur in particular is it's not a chocolatey cream liqueur. This, to me, reminds me so much of Butterscotch Angel Delight, more than anything else. The flavour profile is much more kind of toffee, butterscotch, that sort of feel. And the first time I had this, and most other times I have this now, I get instant flashbacks to being a kid and having Butterscotch Angel Delight, which is my favourite Angel Delight. Angel Delight's pretty good, to be honest. Like, all flavours are pretty good. But the Butterscotch is the number one for me. So a cream liqueur, I kind of like cream liqueurs. I think they're enjoyable to drink. That taste of Butterscotch Angel Delight, well, just give me a bottle and a straw and I'm, I'm away. It's absolutely fantastic. So yet again, for Spirit of Yorkshire, even though the whiskies are fantastic, the thing that they didn't plan to do they still nail it anyway. Um, so as a cream liqueur, and I don't have many cream liqueurs in, if, it, if this didn't exist, it would have been Magnum cream liqueur because that is also a fantastic cream liqueur. But this does exist, and I think this is better. Um, more because I've got a personal interest. So, you know, if you don't like toffee flavours, if you don't like butterscotch and you want more of a closer to Bailey's chocolate cream liqueur, go for Magnum. But if you want just, I like cream liqueurs, I want something that's a bit sweet and something a little bit different, this is absolutely one for you. A well-deserved nomination. So those are the nominations for the liqueur category. Um, you can find the winners on my final uh, winners review video. That's, yeah, I'll work on a title for that, um, which will be coming out uh, at the weekend of our first anniversary, um, which is the 7th of November. That's the first anniversary. Um, so that weekend, I will be releasing the finals video where it's uh, gonna be the announcements of all the winners. So I shall hopefully see you at that video and maybe some of the other nomination videos for the other categories. Cheers.